In the last video, we talked about how to create unit tests in PHP unit. And where we got is we got to a point where we had a user class that we had not yet implemented. We had a unit test to check whether the user had or did not have the name attribute by, by default with the constructor. And we're getting, uh, we're getting some in interesting information about this. So we're saying that types are not recognized are not compatible with declared so this is a sign that we need to go and change our class implementation as we can see we have a class name we call it my class so this is kind of confusing what's what it, what this is doing here this is using the new namespace syntax of PHP what this is saying use the demo name the demo class under the demo so we can see that if we go under this source file, we have demo.php. It's a class called demo, and it's namespaced under, under demo. So the best way to fix that is to rename the demo to something else. So instead of demo, let's call this a user. So go to control or shift and then F6 and rename demo to user. And like so, we've got our user, but we also need a user class. So let's go to, once again and call this user. And it'll ask us to rename it. Yes, we would like to. And like so, we've got our neat and tidy functionality for user. And as you would expect, if we head on over to our demo test, if we replace this demo, and now it's being, it's giving us problems, we can just replace demo with user. So user and then user.php. Oh, and the other problem is we called this, we, we probably called this demo, so we need to rename this as well to the appropriate class. Let's rename that to user. And like so, we are good to go. We can see that everything is working. And finally, we need to go in here and rename this to uh, user slash user. And now what we usually do is we use a shorthand, just like we were doing with Elias's in the command line earlier. We want to create like a shortcut to access that class. So what we do is we call it user. And we can go here instead of this, we can just go uh, class demo test. This is fine. We, you can change this later, but usually what you do is once again, users user test. So what, this is the namespace basically. And what this is saying is I'm going to namespace all these tests into this one thing here. So you can see that that's, that's also reflected right here. Demo test is, is in fact one of these nested contexts. That's what they call them in Mocha, they call it contexts. So right here, we've got our my class. This needs to be changed as well. So let's refactor that to user. So we've got our user now and we're having some issues. Let's try to, let's remove this, that's not necessary. And so now we've got our everything as it should be. Now we should now have a constructor and in our constructor, we need to do some things. So we have this my param thing. These are just, this is just boilerplate. What we need to do is create a constructor that will basically say, okay, well, the name should just be an empty string or maybe undefined or something like that. And the way we do that is we create first an attribute. So we want to go private name is equal well, just do that first and then we'll set that up in the constructor and to do a constructor all we need to do is go function construct uh, the parameters that we want to put in there so we could say well what are we passing in well we'll have a name and we'll also have a maybe maybe just that for now and we can say this so now we've got our constructor we need to set up set things up in our constructor so we need to check if that name is not is empty. So, so what we can do in PHP is go if name or is null, better yet, name. What we can do is we can just say if it's null or if it's undefined, that's basically what null will do in PHP. We can say this name, you can do two different syntax, is equal to um, a default name or something like that. And what that'll do is it'll say at least the name exists. Now the other alternative would be would just be to say uh, this name is equal to name. And what that means is whenever there is a null, so let's let's document that. Whenever name is null or undefined then set it to a default name. 
So this could be a pretty general general scenario. And what we can do now is we can start documenting. So the way we do that is once again, we press enter, press slash star star, and press enter, and it'll say what the parameters are. And we have to say that's a constructor. So to do that, I'll just go to go up here and press constructor, add constructor. And now we've got our information about how this class works. Maybe you want to give some information about it. Create a new instance of user. So it's pretty straightforward. Now people can read it, they can understand. And when we use PHP doc, we can actually export this documentation and they'll see that. So now it's time to go back to our test. We had our red light. Now it's time to get our green light. So let's go back to our unit tests. We have our new user. We did not pass in a name, but we would expect that when so we, we could also do it this way. There's two different ways we could do this. Uh, we could basically say if name is if name is not there, then we'll set equal to uh, default name. So what I did earlier is probably not the best way to do it because um, this just sets a default. So in fact, we can just do we can just take this out um, and remove that. Put it just up here because that kind of says if there's a name that's not defined or anything, then it just defaults to that. That's kind of a PHP thing. Now, what we can do is we can go back here and we can look at our unit tests. We can see that we're not getting that highlighted anymore. And we can see that we've got a problem here with the assert has attribute. So we'll just go ahead and run that. And we can see right here that there is a problem. The attribute must be a string. And this is because we're actually not using the right test. And the best way to understand what the right where the right place is to use a test is first of all think about what you're saying so assert class has attribute what we're actually saying does the defined class have the attribute by default of for example by user also the variables are reversed and we can always find whether we're doing this in the right order by just going to the right one so what I do is I would just go this assert and then what I do is I type in for example um, attribute and I can see a list of all the all the ones that I'm that I want so we want what we're really looking for is a class does a class have an attribute um, sorry what we're looking for is this here so a certain object has attribute so an object is an instance of a class so what we do is we say name does it does this my user have name and we rerun this test we get passing and it says three tests three assertions we are good so our test is now passing now that is a feature now we can commit in the next video let's take a look at configuring git